Hello and welcome back to Bionic Heart 2. Ah, ah! What am I overlooking? What the hell am I overlooking? There must be something I'm overlooking because I have all the pieces now and it's still not coming together. Where is Tanya? That's the question I need to answer now. Without Tanya, all I've been able to find won't be worth a penny. I returned to a safe house, but she wasn't there anymore. Still, my colleagues were. So it looks like it isn't a safe house anymore. They didn't catch her, however, and they found no leads on where she is. I secretly read all the reports the CSI sent in. Tanya's the only one I can trust. If I can't find her, I wouldn't know where else to go to. I can't just reveal what I know about nanotech. What Rob said is true, and everyone including the Chief is in their pockets, and they'll just dispose of the evidence. And then of me. I can't go to the media either. Nanotech also owns the, the TV channels, and if I went to a small news agency, Nanotech could just buy them easily. My only hope is that Tanya has a way of using what I found on Nanotech against them. But even if she has, I'll have to find her. Just where could she be? Meanwhile, in the corridor to the Mars penthouse. Well, that was that. I'm done with everything I needed to do, and the rest will take care of itself. Time to go home and wrap things up here. Strange how familiar this flat has already become to me. All that in just a few days. Ah, you're back. Good to see you. Everything alright again? Yes, I just... I needed to clear my head a little. Oh, it's been a long few days. Yeah, definitely. Tom, did you... No worries, buddy. I managed to get all the files in that dirty little virus deleted. It wasn't actually as hard as I thought it would be. I knew I could count on you. To be honest, I really didn't have to work much. Turns out the account I had to hack already had a back door installed. Back door? What's that? Now, where to access it? The bypass is all security it would usually have. Couldn't have broken through those firewalls in a month without that. Strange. Why would there be a back door? Beats me. Maybe some other hacker was on the account before me. You mean... Someone else could have gotten to those files? Easy, Luke. I cross-referenced the files, they're nowhere else on the entire Mars network. Now they're no longer anywhere. Good, I was starting to worry. Then only one question remains. What do we do now? Same thing we plan to do anyway. We wait for a message from Earth. We wait for the situation between Tanya and Mir to resolve. And once that's settled, we all go home. Home. <laughs> Sounds nice. Yeah, I miss good old rainy London. Already? Already. Just in case you get homesick, Tom. Shower's over there. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mayor's got access to the virus. <laughs> I kick the grate at the end of the air conditioning shaft into the room and slide out of my hiding place. No one around. This is where I should be. At least if my information is correct. The bad thing is... There should be some giant robot somewhere down here, and I don't see one. This room is really huge, and it seems just right, but I don't see a robot. There's two large pieces of machinery produ producing from the floor. Oh! That's no floor. That's the robot. God, how big is that thing? It must be over 100 feet long. These large things to the left and right must be its feet, and... Yep, I'm standing its between its legs, I guess, but it's not, like, on the floor, technically. The floor has this huge indentation and it lies inside. What's that sense to do with its, its construction? Maybe this room here was like a giant mold and its parts were assembled right into the form. In any case, how does it leave this hall? It's high enough that the robot could stand in it, but there are no doors it could lead through. Maybe the ceiling opens up somehow? In any case, I have to find out where to connect the brain. Can't be too hard. Probably inside its head. I look around. And around. Well, it does have a head. It doesn't look as though the head would open. Actually, I don't see anything that looks like an opening. Or at least nothing where one of these brain jars would fit to. I guess we would be too much of a hope for a manual laying around here somewhere. Oh, damn, I should have thought of this before coming in here. Wait, what's this little alcove on the side? It looks like a chair or something. It doesn't belong to the robot, though. But it looks as though it's meant to control something. There's a touch panel next to it and see. Extraction sequence standby. Mm -hmm. Looks like I could start some extraction sequence from here. Let's try it. No death. Valid command. Encephalostactic. That unpronounceable word. Not detected. It's missing a... Encephal... Stop trying to make me say this word, game! Alright, I'll try again. 
Encephalostog... Encephalo... No, hang on. Encephalostagma. Encephalostagma, whatever that is. Wait, that would sound familiar. Encephalostagma. Why did I... Of course, in Mayor's conversation with Lucas Walker. That's the fancy scientific term for brain jar. So it's looking for that, eh? Well, you can have it. I'll just put that jar, jar on the chair and try again. Invalid command. Encephalostagma in the wrong position. What am I not doing right? Wait, this really is a chair and someone was sitting on there. And the head would be up here. So if I hold the brain jar up here and try again... Ah! Extraction sequence in progress. Much better. Something's happening. A myriad of tiny screwdrivers are coming out of the wall and moving around the brain jar I'm holding. I guess if I was sitting there, these jars would be opening up my head right now. Another error message. Cranium opening sequence failed. Cranium already opened. Continue. Yes, no. Well, yes, of course. The screwdrivers retract, and instead a large hole in the back wall opens. Something that looks like a pipe with a suction cup on top comes out and moves towards the brain jar. With a slurping sound, it attaches to the jar and begins to pull inside the wall. Well, this is what I wanted, so I let go and watch the apparatus disappear back inside the wall, and the hole close again. Okay, now, let's see what the touch panel has to say. Three choices. Extract another encephalopathy, implant standby mode. I don't want to plant this brain, so... Okay, host body, make one the main choice. Humanoid testing device, beer moth device. Beer moth device, what else? I touch the menu option, and... Whoa, something's happening. Some heavy machinery just started to run. The entire room's vibrating. It's hard to see, but I think the BMR device is moving. Yes, it's starting to slide towards the back wall of the room, just very slowly. What does the panel say? Implantation sequence. 743 men. Some sort of countdown. Another option. Abort implantation. I was hoping to just prepare everything and hide again, but the sequence can be aborted. I'll have to stay down here and make sure nobody messes with it. Especially since this machinery isn't exactly silent, I doubt the process is going to go unnoticed. Good thing there's only one door into this room. I doubt anyone else would come in the same way I did, so all I need to do is watch that one entrance. I'd best stand right next to it, so I can surprise whoever comes in. It'll probably be guards, so that means I should be able to grab a gun, and with a gun... That moment, somebody suddenly grabs my arm from behind. What? And before I can react, I'm hurled around with immense force and thrown against a plastic wall cover, which shatters under my weight. I hear the crack of electricity around me, as my body rips a few power lines from the sockets and leaves the wires open. Fortunately, none of them touches me. I slide into an alcove of the hall, still a little dizzy from the sudden impact, and before I know it, something lands on me and grabs my neck. Surprise! <laughs> Julia! So I was right about that sound I thought I heard in the air ducts. That was you in there! So you followed me through the ducts? Oh, I didn't know exactly where you were until all of a sudden this stuff down here came to life. And it was just a matter of following the noise. Which, by the way, was a nice touch. I wouldn't have been able to sneak up on you without it. Gotta keep talking. In seven minutes the beer moth device will be ready. Then I have an ally. Good job. So what are you going to do now that you've caught... I'll tear your head off and bring it to Mr. Mayor. And then... Then nothing. After all the trouble he's had with you, I doubt he'll give you another body. And then I'm finally the only true cyborg in the world. You sure Mayor will do what you want? Never seemed like a very reasonable man to me. You're right. Can't trust him on that. See? So I'll first tear your head off and then I'll crush it. Oh. Good idea I had, Tanya. And now, say farewell. Oh, it doesn't look as though she's interested in the conversation. All she's interested in is tearing my head off. That's just strong enough to really tear me apart, but she severs the connection between my head and my body. Oh god, I've got to do something. This time the meter shows structural integrity. With each decision, go down. Okay. Okay, so hang on. She can pretend that Julia has managed to sever her neck. To do that, she must, in order, fight back strongly, then not so strongly, then weaken, then cease to fight. Okay. Hmm. Okay. First obvious move is trying to kick her away from you. Tanya shows strong resistance. I pull up my legs and give Julia a good hard kick to the stomach. Unfortunately, she doesn't even budge. Oh yes, fight me, resist, that makes it more fun! Okay, so that was a strong resistance. 
maybe scratch at her eyes. Medium resistance. I stretch out my hand to Julia's face and claw her eyes. If I could damage them, maybe she'll let go. Fortunately, that task is much harder than I thought. I think I slide off her face and I can't get a grip. Sheesh, you fight like a girl, Tanya. Okay, maybe try and reach for a wire. One of these cables is just in reach. If I can grab it, I stretch out my arm and ah, uh, too short by half an inch. Huh? What are you? Oh, I see, electrified wires. Neat idea, really neat idea, Tanya. That'll save me quite some time. Holding me down with one arm and one knee, Julie reaches for a cable and grabs it, and she pushes it against my head. Okay, yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm into safe scumming territory now because I'm gonna win this, damn it. Okay then. Uh, t -t 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 -t. So we've done a strong, we've done a medium. Now ideally we need a moderate. So, try and distract her maybe? Weak resistance. Julia, behind you! Huh? Quick, behind you! Behind me? What? A three headed monkey? If your attempts at fooling me are already this bad, you must be getting weak now, eh? Okay. Now should we try... Now should we try to see struggling on them? I twitch up at one final time, then as suddenly as I can, stop moving and go limp. Let my arms fall to the side. Now look at that. Your head's still on, but you don't move any longer. Could it be your neck's broken, and you can still hear me, no longer fight? Oh, how wonderful. Julia smiles. She must think she's won. And my fingers are now almost in reach of that power cable. One fast move and... What the... I grab the cable and slam the live end against Julia's head. The <laughs> scream is louder than all the machinery around me. It's the most terrible scream I've ever heard. At the same time, full of agony, hate and rage. And the longer it goes, the more metallic and synthetic it becomes, and after a short while it has nothing even remotely human about it anymore. Julia's body shakes and shivers, and the skin on her head begins to peel off where I hold the wire to it, and putrid black smoke rises from where it burns. Eventually, she stops screaming altogether, and only shakes and shivers. I hold the wire in place for at least another 30 seconds, before I'm certain that she's dead. And then I take it away, and Julia's body immediately collapses. Enough power for you. <sighs> Disgusted, I push her off me and stand up. My neck doesn't hurt. I usually don't feel pain, but it doesn't feel exactly right either. I hope there's no long-term damage. Turning around, I look back to the hangar. Apparently, the implantation procedure has progressed quite a bit. The robot's no longer lying on the floor. Instead, it's now leaning against the wall. There's a tube going from the wall into its back, between its shoulders. That must be where the brain jar goes in. Wait, the tube's starting to retract already. I must mean the brain jar's already inside. Wonder how long it'll take until the new pilot has control of. Woohoohoo! This looks awesome! Apparently, not that long. You like it? I wave towards the head of the giant robot and it looks down. Tanya? Is that you down there? Yep, that's me. Wow! You're so tiny. And you've grown quite a bit since I last saw you. Hang on, let me see if I can control that thing. The robot takes one step into the hall, but one surprisingly fast step. The entire ground shakes its movements. Yep, looks as though I can. What's that? Hmm? Ah, I just found the weapons interface of that thing and... Whew -whew, it's really packed. Missiles alone could level a city. I hope you're not thinking of testing out those missiles in here. Nah, too close quarters, I think. Not so fast. Mia and Mark. Hello, Jason. That voice. You're standing right there, boy. You'd better do as he says. You. You're the ones who spoke to me before. The guy who put my brain in a jar. Indeed I am. And I must say I'm quite impressed, Jason. Your first time inside the Behemoth device and you're already able to move it. I'm able to do more than that. The giant robot points one of his arms at Mira Mark. An arm with a lot of weapons on it. Nothing happens. Huh? Oh, are the weapons working? Too bad I've locked them with a special security I will go with them. One that needs to be decoded before that moment, the remote robot's machine gun begins to fire. Yeah! Mark's chest practically explodes, and he's thrown back against the wall, leaving a huge bloody spot as he collapses. 
What caliber is that gun? Must be at least 30 millimeters or something? Mia's face is frozen in panic as he looks at the dead body of his former head scientist. What? What? I wouldn't count on any security algorithms at being able to stop me. But, but... Mia frantically digs his hand inside his pocket, pulls out the device, points it at the robot. And I also wouldn't count on your emergency shutdown remote to work. It was the first thing I disabled when I took control of the BMR device. How? I'm better than you thought. <laughs> Even though the robot can't grin. I can practically hear Jason grin as he says that. Mia, in return, goes even whiter than he already is. Then he suddenly seems to remember something and looks to his fallen scientist again. He kneels down, apparently to inspect Mark's dead body. It's difficult to see, but he's pulling something out of the pocket of Mark's lab coat. And he's visibly relieved when he has it. What was that, Mia? Hmm? What was what? That thing you pulled from Mark's pocket. Huh? You must have been mistaken. I didn't... He did pull something out of the scientist guy's pocket? Yeah. Tanya, would you please see what it is? A pleasure. I walk over to Mia, grab his arm and force the thing he's holding out of his hand. Ah! Careful, you brute! Looks like a small metal canister. Careful with that! Don't damage it! It's a miracle that idiot didn't blast it when he shot Mark! Any ideas what's in it? No, sorry. It says something complicated on the side, something about alpha reticuli strain. Does that mean anything to you? I'm afraid not. Hmm, Mia seems to be very anxious about it. He sure doesn't want it to be opened. Hey, I know what this is. You do? I overheard him and Mark talking about some information they found in your computer. Something about a virus, a bioweapon. And judging by the look on Mia's face, there must be a sample of this virus already produced. Then bring it to me. I nod and walk over to the giant robot, and carefully place the small container into one of its huge hands. To my surprise, a small hatch opens inside the hands. The container slides inside. Well, guys. It was nice meeting you all, but I gotta be going. Got some people waiting for me back home. You... you also found out... Yep, I know the beard device is capable of spaceflight too. You wanted to use it to attack Mars, right? Rest assured that it will not leave without having used it for the purpose it was meant for. Destruction. However, what if instead of destroying my home, I just destroy yours, man? Earth? You're... you're gonna destroy Earth? Well... I fear this robot might be a little undersized to handle all of Earth, even if you deserved it. But I guess it should be enough to turn all of London to rubble, don't you think? No! No! Would you mind giving me a lift out of here before you do that, Jason? I don't really want to be in London when you turn it to rubble. Of course, Tanya. Just top on. Cargo compartment inside the left leg. You should fit in there easily. Alright, but uh, please move carefully then. I don't have to shake me around too much, okay? I'll do my best. Oh, and by the way... I grin. If you want to do me a special favor and really go for destroying Earth, I have an idea. You do? Yeah, the virus. Why didn't you spread it all over London? Jesus Christ, this has turned dark! I mean, wow, Tanya is turning really psychotically evil. You mean... Yeah, it's a bioweapon. Wipe out a lot more people than your other weapons can. Mark said it was infectious. There's a good chance it'll spread around even beyond London. Who knows, maybe the entire world. Hmm, I could certainly do that. No, please, in the name of all that's good and just, don't do that. You shut up, good and just. You have no right to even use those words. Don't you think that's a little much, Tanya? I mean, it's only Earthlings, but still. Still what? I don't really like all this killing. But Jason, I'm not talking about killing them. All I'm talking about is infecting them with this virus. If they're worth their salt, they'll find a cure, and if not, don't they deserve to die? Don't you see what they're doing? Extracting brains, creating bioweapons, all in the name of profit? Yeah, well, come on, do me that favor. They need a lesson. You owe me that much, don't you? Nah, nah. Aw, oh, come on. No, Tanya, really not. Besides, that virus isn't mine, it's my sister's. I sigh. Ah, oh, well, can't have everything. Smiling, I wave to Mir as I walk towards the opening hatch on the robot's leg. Very well, Mir. Good luck explaining everything that happens now. You, you're, you're not killing me? Of course not. Not for fun knowing that you'll be made responsible for everything that happens now. Oh god, oh god! I enter the hatch, which closes behind me. I tuck myself into the straps that are probably intended to secure cargo inside here. Let's hope these things hold. And as Jason leaps off, and judging from the rounds, breaks through the ceiling, I am really happy that my body is cybernetic. Real one would have thrown up just now. 
Ending unlocked, Earth Sweet Earth. With the virus data wiped and all evidence pointing their meddling destroyed, Luke, Helen and Tom waited a few more days to make sure that they had succeeded. Sarah's desperate reaction as she found her research lost was the final proof Luke needed. He scolded her for not taking better care of herself and then broke contact with her. Shortly after that, news of the developments on Earth reached him and his friends, and as soon as they could be sure Nanotech would no longer hunt them, they booked the next shuttle for Earth. They left behind a life of wealth and luxury, but all three agreed that this wasn't the life they wanted. All they needed was on Earth. Even if it had been nice, as Helen pointed out, to see something else other than rain for a little while. And again, locked, moving out. A few weeks later. Welcome back, Tom. Any luck? I'm afraid not. No free apartments. Oh, come on. You can't both continue to hang around here. Sorry, Helen. Your apartment's the only one left. Don't you know anybody else in London? None who haven't lost their homes as well. But look at you still have a roof over your head. I haven't to share it with the both of you. Ugh. Well, maybe I'll have more luck tomorrow. Apparently they're redesigning empty office spaces into provisional quarters right now. Empty office spaces? Yeah, down by Canary Wharf. Hey, banks went bankrupt along with Nanotech. At least one good thing came out of this mayhem. Huh? Are you expecting visitors? Oh god, I hope it's not more refugees. Ah! Hi there. But, but, Tanya? Saw Tom out in the street. Thought I'd drop in. You, you. I see you got the door repaired, Helen. Hope it wasn't too expensive. How, how can you know about? Long story. Mind if I come in? We don't have much space near Tanya. If you aren't planning to stay overnight, please do come in. Thanks. Good to see you made it out in one piece. A little cracked. Nothing broken. I'll have to be careful from now on. My neck isn't quite what it used to be. Can it be repaired? Do you know anybody who's ever repaired a cybernetic body? Good point. Why are you here? Why did you come here, Tanya? Well, I heard what happened to Luke's apartment, and I'm not entirely innocent with regards to what happened to it and the rest of London. You mean, you did? As I said, long story. I really don't want to tell it now. Maybe a little later. But now I have something more important. Am I right in thinking you're currently without a place to stay, Luke? Well, I'm currently staying here with Helen and Tom. And that's perfectly alright with me. Well, just in case you might need another place, I have one for you. Spacious one, lots of computers you can work at. There's computers there? State of the art technology. That sounds intriguing. One of the office buildings down at Canary Wharf? No, something better. Someone's secret hideout. What? A friend of mine moved out of town recently, but before he went, he showed me where he lived. Nice place, really. You have friends? really don't know me, Helen. Now what are you... Now what? Are you interested? Of course I'm interested. Let me get my things quickly. Come on. Computers. Oh, perfect. Might even be able to start my own business then. You're starting your own business? Sure, a man's going to make something for himself, doesn't he? A man? Why do you say that in such a weird tone? I think Helen just doesn't appreciate you, Tom. And you... You do appreciate him? <laughs> Uh-oh. Poor Tom. Hmm? That woman's trouble. Don't think Tom will be able to handle that. Oh, Tom will be fine. How can you be so sure? Tom wouldn't even attempt to handle Tanya. You don't mean... Oh! Not like that, Mel. Not like that. <laughs> Ending Lost in Space. Logbook of the Nanotech Prototype XB-22. Codename, Behemoth Device. Well, I guess this is it. First time I'm using this logbook sequence. First time and, well, probably the last time. Yeah, it sounded cool. Having a giant robot body full of weapons and jet engines and a fusion reactor to power all that. Including a really powerful rocket engine that gives this body the potential for interplanetary travel. How was I supposed to have known this engine wasn't designed for takeoff? It was a dead for space travel and for one safe landing. The original plan was to have it brought into orbit with a carrier rocket, then switch to its own propulsion. So I already burned most of my fuel just getting away from Earth. Now I'm on my way to the outer planets of the solar system, but yeah, I'm out of fuel. I'm not even on a good course for Mars. I thought I could just travel in the general direction of where I wanted to go and then make adjustments later. But you don't do adjustments without fuel to propel the maneuvering jets. I've already calculated the course I'm on. If I'm lucky, I'm going to miss Neptune and then continue to drift out into the Milky Way. If I'm not so lucky, 
I'm going to end a orbit around Neptune, or worse, crash into the planet. And I doubt this robot body can take that. Should anybody find this thing in one piece and hear this message? It'd be really nice if someone could give me a refill and send me back. Main rockets of this thing run on hydrogen, and I think it can make it back on Mars with a full tank. It'll take a bit of time, but I can make some calculations. If you need me to destroy a few cities in exchange for the hydrogen, fine with me, as long as I don't know anybody there. Oh, and uh, if you should find me, that is the brain inside of this thing, dead on arrival. Tell my sister Sarah she was right. My luck did run out one day. Well, so much for me. I hope the sleep mode on this thing works. And that was Bionic Heart 2. Yeah, I kind of enjoyed it. You know, it's, it's always interesting to see a sequel to something that had a lot of potential endings. Now, I stated at the beginning of this Let's Play that my original plan was to do multiple run-throughs depending on how long it was. And it was slightly longer than I anticipated, but more importantly, a few bits and bobs have come up in real life. It's nothing major or nothing serious, but it is going to stop me from recording any more footage for a couple of days. Which is kind of annoying, but, you know, these things happen. But I'm glad I got at least one complete run through of this game done, and uh, review will be coming out at the end of the week as per usual. So, all I will say is, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in future series.